Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 49 of Caspi Road to Exploration. And pretty much all of this episode, we will be building more Duna vehicles, or well, finishing off one and building another one, because we have many things to send to Duna. Duna is not going to be a small mission for me. This is going to be big. So the first thing we're launching is just another habitation module for the... Um, uh, for the kind of big transfer spacecraft, which we have named now, and we'll see that in a little bit. But for now, we just need to continue with uh, construction. If you remember from the last episode, uh, the habitation modules are on kind of like these beams that go out, so you could, you know, imagine that you could rotate it and have um, artificial gravity in a way. Obviously, it doesn't really matter in KSP, but I like that sort of thing. So yes, we're launching this aboard the Starlight 1, my... Uh, Little rocket, which has replaced uh, all of the old pulsars, um, because well, you got to move up your technology, and this is a much more efficient rocket. So yeah, um, and you can get a glimpse of it there. But you've seen this before. The one thing I did do was move the solar panels, because if you actually look at like one frame last uh, episode, one of the big solar panels on the Duna spacecraft got broken um, by when when I kind of smashed off the solar panels to allow it to dock. A bit of the debris flew off and hit. Uh, one of the big solar panels and broke it, so I'm going to have to replace that. So basically I've moved the solar panels to a better location. Um, they're on decouplers, so they won't be left on the spacecraft. But yeah, I just don't want to break my spacecraft more. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, we're going to get our encounter right there, but first we need to bring this back. And the reason... Uh, one of the... I, I accidentally burned all of the fuel from um, this rocket, and I'm supposed to leave uh, the bottom tank with uh, fuel in it to land. So this came in really far away from the KSE because it actually did most of the burn and it also uh, had no fuel to slow down but it actually survived rather nicely and lands gently on the ocean which is quite kind of surprising to me considering it had no fuel to slow down so we got a little less money back for that but hey anyway after a little bit of maneuvering in here we are just approaching the um the Duna spacecraft uh, I have forgotten exactly what it's called just interplanetary experience Laura or something. Yeah, because this won't just be going to do and I'm going to reuse it. So we're going to drop that uh, second stage and we're going to just dock this in here. And you can see that missing solar panel just above this. There should be a solar panel there, but there's not. So I will have to bring up another one, which is a bit of a shame because uh, that's going to be annoying. But <laughs> it'll be fine. I'll just bring it up with the crew. Hopefully I'll remember. And if I don't, it doesn't really matter. This has more than enough power on it. But yeah, there we are. Nice and docked. And we're going to get rid of these solar panels. They fly off really satisfyingly, I think, actually. I do quite like that. Um, so yeah, those won't get in the way, and then we're going to decouple that probe as well, as we'll uh, see here. We're going to throw that away. It, uh, part of it explodes, but it's fine. Um, it doesn't damage the spacecraft in any way. And then we're going to redeploy the um, radiators. So yes, this is almost complete. It Well, it is complete, but I just need to attach a couple of landers to it now, um, and refuel it. That's going to be the big thing, is I need to put loads of fuel in this, but... Uh, yeah, I just need to put the couple of landers on there, which will be the things that will take Kerbals to the surface of Ike and Duna. And that'll be good. So yeah, that's uh, that's all done. And then we just need to bring back the second stage, which comes in actually pretty close to the KSC. I'm getting pretty good at this now. And then we land it gently on the ground. It obviously... Oh, it doesn't fall over. Oh, that's nice. Yes, uh, a good reusable rocket, although I did lose a little bit of money on that sort of first stage. Anyway, now launching a Pulse RY, which is my biggest rocket, if you may remember from the last episode. Um, we launched the main bit of the Duna, uh, the, the Duna spacecraft with it. But this today is taking up uh, totally uh, the first part of a totally different spacecraft. It is taking up part of my um, resource station, which I'm going to send out to Duna, which will stay there permanently, because the... Um, the Cycler spacecraft, the, uh, the actual Duna spacecraft, will be going uh, back and forth. But I'm going to leave this here with a little bit of extra fuel, a bunch of extra life support, a bunch of RCS, and it'll just um, act as just a nice place to keep a few resources. So we're going to deposit it in orbit, hopefully get to orbit before that uh, first stage gets anywhere near the ground, which we do. Um, and yeah, you can see it's a pretty simple thing right here. It will be quite hard to get out to Duna because it's obviously going to be full of fuel. But we'll just put a big-ass rocket stage on the back, and it'll be nice. So yeah, this should be very useful, and if I run out of any resource, this will have uh, more than enough for me to use. So yeah, we just need to land this uh, first stage. Last time it didn't work, um, because it fell too quickly and I didn't have enough fuel, so I've put more fuel in it this time. I've also added air brakes, 
Um, someone keeps telling me that air brakes. I know they're technically the wrong way around, but yeah, that would be for an aircraft they're the wrong way around, but like this, it looks way more rockety. Uh, so that's what I care about. Um, and yeah, we'd pull the chutes and it should land rather gently. We're just using that one central engine to land it on the ocean. And we'll get about a hundred grand back for this. This is not a cheap stage um, because it's using those vector engines. We lose about 10% of the money, so it's not super cheap to launch these, but hey, it's a big rocket and we need it. So yeah, you can see the uh, first part of the station in orbit now. It's got a big antenna so it can communicate all the way back because this will be going separately. Um, and yeah, this should be a rather useful asset out around Aduna. Um, and then we've got to land the second stage as well. This comes in really close to the mountains, which isn't great because um, mountains aren't a great place to land rockets. But using a bit of a, you know, burning my engines, I managed to make it land in the kind of foothills more than the mountains. And it lands really gently on the ground. It does fall over, but the parachutes stop it breaking, so that's all good. <clears throat> but anyway... As I said, we need to rename this spacecraft, and I asked you for names, and you all gave me some fantastic names, but I went with the Concordia, which is the daughter of Mars in Roman mythology. So thank you to uh, the Loganators, or Loganators, for that. Um, he's the person who gave me the name. And yes, and it's gonna, the, in, uh, you know, uh, Roman mythology, it's spelled with a C, but this is Kerbal Space Program, so I'm gonna spell it with the K. Um, yeah, Concordia, a little bit like Concord, I guess, but it kind of made sense to me because it's uh, the daughter of Mars, and Duna is, of course, not Mars, but kind of a smaller version of it in a smaller universe, so, I don't know, I quite like that. Um, so the Concordia will be taking us to, um, well, Duna, and probably Eve at some point, and back to Duna. We might just launch another one of these. Um, I'm going to make a bigger one of these for going to Jewel eventually, um, which will all be, f f you know, fairly quick, as I'm really stepping up going to these places because I'm, I'm done with Kerbin. Usually I like to kind of interlace it a bit, but uh, I just did too much Kerbin stuff. But anyway, we have another very important payload to launch, the second part of the space station headed for Duna, um, which, well, uh, I'm going to change this to be a ship so I can see it, well, a station so I can see it, see it more easily in orbit because there's a lot of probes. Um, but this is the transfer stage. It is pretty much the, the sort of top level of mass we can launch. We're not launching it fully fueled because it would be too heavy that way. But yes, we're going to launch right now with our giant rocket and hope like hell that this gets to orbit. And more than that, hope like hell that um, the rocket can land because we'll have a much smaller time margin this time. Um, but yeah, so uh, hopefully this will go rather nicely. I do very much love this rocket, the kind of five engine thing. I really wish I might change the name of this rocket to the Pulsar 5 because it reminds me so much of the Saturn 5 with a kind of stubby first stage and the five big engines. I know the top stage only has one engine other than like unlike the five I want to say not J2s. I well, the, the five Saturn 5 uh, upstage engines which I've totally forgotten the name of. Was it J2? Yeah, I swear it was F1s and J2s. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, so we decoupled the fairing, which doesn't go very well. And we've got to burn our way into orbit, but we really don't have enough time. So I'm going to go as close to orbital speed as possible and then switch to the first stage because we really need to land that. And then we'll deal with this later because this has quite a big fuel margin, actually. Um, so yeah, we switch to this. And it's pretty uneventful landing. And we land just pretty nicely on the ocean. Um, I, I kind of do it as quickly as possible so we have as much time as possible, but yeah. Anyway, so back in orbit, we're burning radially because our orbits will skew if, so we need to pull up the uh, periaps and drop the apoaps so that we're just in a safe orbit. Um, and yeah, so that, that actually does work out quite well, but I also realized I was targeting the wrong thing, and I've launched on the exact wrong side of the orbit to meet with the station, so we're going to have to time warp quite a lot. Um, but after a lot of time warping, um, we get to the right place, and we're gonna do a quick prograde burn so that we, because we're in a 70 kilometer, well, 75 kilometer orbit right now, so I'm gonna push myself up to its orbit real quick, and then I'm gonna burn a little more, because I've warped time enough, about three days, so that I'm way ahead of it, so I'm gonna have to do a bit more of a burn to slow down to meet it again, um, because that's the easiest way to do this, really, kind of um, having a higher orbit than your target, because then you have more of a margin. Um, because if I do need to drop my periaps too much, I might hit the atmosphere. So anyway, I'm just gonna, still using the second stage because it has more than enough fuel. I probably could do a bigger payload, but obviously you can see the problem is that the second stage, well, the first stage doesn't have so much time to land, but I guess we could tweak that in the future a little bit. Um, but yeah, so after a bit of, you know, maneuvering in, I, well, no, yeah, I kind of maneuver pretty close, but I've still got to tweak it a little bit, so I'm just kind of moving around with the uh, reaction control thrusters, as you can see. And the reaction control thrusters uh, and the solar panels on this also decouple because I really don't need them hanging around 
taking up mass and part count, so those will also be decoupled. I decouple most of my things I don't need when I'm launching spacecraft. Um, but yeah, so after a bit more tweaking, we will hopefully uh, get really nice and close to the uh, to the station. And this was a little bit eventful, but it all went fine, and uh, here we are, just uh, getting behind it. You can see this is a massive transfer stage, and you may be wondering why I'm not using nuclear engines. That would be the better option if I were coming back, but this is actually the cheapest option for a one-way trip, because nuclear engines are so much more expensive than just standard rocket engines. So, um, yeah, I went for that. It's a big transfer stage. It'll also allow me to do burns more quickly. Um, but yeah, we get that Dr. Torrance, a pretty big spacecraft, but this will definitely help out. It has more than enough Delta V by a little bit to go to Duna, so that should be good. And um, so we've got to um, firstly decouple the kind of a probe core and RCS store here, which I don't want hanging around because it's co covering one of my engines. And um, so I'm going to send that away. And then I'll get rid of the solar panels. But yeah, I'm going to have to bring up some fuel to refuel this uh, stage as well. We've got a lot of time before the Duna window, so we're fine. Um, but yeah, this is going to be quite uh, probably another, at least another couple of episodes of mostly this sort of stuff. But I will try and slip in some more interesting things because this is pretty much all just building stuff in orbit. But they're all pretty cool things. Anyway, that's all nice and built now. So we're going to just deorbit um, the second stage. Just watch it burn a little bit. And then this one lands much more nicely than the other one. Um, this lands actually pretty close to the KSC, but in the dark. Um, and we're going to recover that and get lots of money back. Oh no, this actually is further away from the KSC. This is, but it doesn't hit the mountains, which is good. Anyway, yet another launch. This is bound for the uh, Concordia. This is one of the landers that will be going to uh, landing on Duna, actually performing the Duna mission. Um, to go and, you know, meet the base. Or this one might land on Ike, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I still have my mission to explore Ike, which I never completed with all of my probe missions, um, because I just, I just never did. Um, so yeah, just gonna push our way on into orbit. We're using a Pulsar X for this, which is my single stage to orbit, which has about a 30 ton lifting capability. Um, the lander itself, fully fueled, is only about 16 tons, but this was the only thing that could, well, they're obviously the Pulsar Y could launch it, but that would be a little overpowered. So this was the best vehicle for the job. And I have fully um, kind of uh, kitted this out with Werner thrusters and air brakes to make it a little easier on me. Um, and we're gonna get rid of that fairing. That one couples a little cleaner than the last one. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna push it on into orbit. It's a pretty small lander. It will land mostly on parachutes on Duna. It has two drogues and two mains, and then it'll uh, just slow down with engines at the last minute. And then um, it'll obviously go back into orbit just on engines. It's pretty easy to get off Duna um, with just engines. So yeah, we're just going to place this in orbit and go and meet the uh, go and meet the Concordia. As you can see, just moving in here, looking rather beautiful, even with a solar panel down. And we just got to find an appropriate docking port, and then just uh, maneuver in and dock to it. This is looking rather full now. It's uh, quite a nice spacecraft. I do like it actually. It's quite compact really because the fuel goes mostly around the outside. Um, it does look a bit busy though. I'm not sure how much I like it, but I think it's interesting. It's I've never really built something quite like this before. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And the artificial gravity thing is quite nice looking, I think. Um, but yeah, then we've just got to bring back the rocket. And I actually get this... Um, oh no, this is not the one that goes close to the KSC. I mean, it gets pretty close to the KSC, but the problem is when I'm deorbiting, um, some of the engines start heating up a lot, and I didn't realize that I should either stop time warping or fire up my engines a little bit. So I actually lose the main engine and a bunch of others. This uh, would be a problem, but luckily I still have two engines parallel to each other, so I can apply just a normal amount of thrust. So I just activate those two engines, deploy the air brakes, and I actually land safely, which is a little surprising to me. That was pretty stupid. I should have fired my engine to stop the engines exploding. Um, but yeah, it worked out. I'm gonna, not going to get quite as much money back, but I land the stage um, on the two engines. So yeah, it's a pretty versatile rocket. You don't even need the main engine. Um, well, at least for landing, that is. Anyway, uh, now we're just going to launch the exact same thing again. This is just going to go, oh, look at all that debris around Kerbin. I like occasionally looking at how busy my low Kerbin orbit is. I've got to find the right, um, the right target and head on up to it. So yeah, same thing again, pretty much. Um, we're going to just launch this up there. We've actually got less than a year till the Duna window now. Um, that'll go quite quickly in episode terms, but I still have a lot of building left to do. And there's an EVE window in between, which I'd like to send a more advanced probe to so that I can actually land. Because I have landed on EVE, but I just didn't include enough batteries to survive the journey down. That was kind of dumb of me. I've made a lot of stupid mistakes in this series. <laughs> but uh, hopefully there will be no stupid mistakes um, it, it, well, on the way to Duna or at Duna and... Well, cards on the table, the giant station uh, I'm launching to Duna is pretty much my stupid mistake buffer. If I don't bring enough life support or fuel or anything, I have that. So, 
it should be fine, hopefully, mostly. <laughs> but anyway, yes, push it on into orbit. This Pulsar X is very useful. I do like having single stage to orbit because you don't have to worry about um, getting to orbit um, before the first stage lands or landing the first stage before the second stage passes over its apple apoapsis. It's really nice. Um, I wish I could do everything with this rocket, which I probably could, but um, I'd have to, you know, plan things around the rocket. And I don't like doing that. I like just building bigger rockets. And I do love the Pulsar Y or the Pulsar 5 because it's so... So beautiful with its big giant fire engines. But anyway, um, yeah, we just need to get this docked on here and you can see that happening right here just on the other side. And this spacecraft is complete. We just need to send up some fuel, some Kerbals and just do some general checks and I guess send up another solar panel. But yes, you can see it now. It is looking rather beautiful, rather compact, rather nice and uh, it will be heading to Duna rather soon. Um, probably not episode 50, but sometimes after that. But anyway, yes, um, we actually bring this stage back right next to the KSC, and none of the engines explode, luckily. Um, but yeah, you burn a little fuel to get even closer, but this was a pretty good landing. I'm getting pretty good at landing relatively close to the KSC about 50% of the time now. But yeah, we just need to plop this down on the ocean as we usually do. Uh, and yeah, this is the end of the episode. Again, a bit of a shorter one because uh, there's a lot more to cut out when you're just kind of building spacecraft. But yes, I hope you have enjoyed this, and I hope you are enjoying this series and are looking forward to the Duna mission. But anyway, we have reached the end of the episode, and if you'd like to go and check out a couple more videos, there is my Mr. Pre president video in which I save the president most of the, some of the, not much, but I try and save the president, and it's a really fun game, actually. And then there's the latest episode of Fall of Kerbin, in which I launch a giant bomber to slaughter penguins' tanks. And we do lots of dumb bombing, and it goes sort of fine, but not super great. So maybe go check that out. And as always, there are links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description. And I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.